Queensland cyclone threat building on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for January 20th. An increasingly busy tropics in the southern hemisphere populated by three various stages of tropical cyclone, Angrek being the strongest, uh, sauntering around in the eastern Indian Ocean with the remnants of Bilal still active and a tropical depression unnamed or unnumbered over northern Australia. 132 days until hurricane season begins in the Atlantic and already you can see an extra tropical cyclone up there and that's going to be headed towards the British Isles this weekend and amber alerts issued by the Met Office. Elsewhere the Atlantic is fairly quiet. In the eastern Pacific we have a few little uh, extra tropical systems up there and some rainfall by the looks of things for the coast of California. 115 days until the hurricane season starts up again here still a while to uh, wait before that happens. In the western Pacific there are no areas of interest right now, a few little uh, low latitude thunderstorms that are blowing up there, probably producing a lot of rain under that actually. In the long range models there are one or two rumblings that there could be cyclonic development there. In the North Indian Ocean very quiet there, in the Australian region then uh, that's our tag there, A4 for that tropical depression. Angrek off the left hand side, west of the Cocos Keeling Islands. And of course this 90% area of interest that's catching most people's attention uh, could become a very severe cyclone and could impact Queensland. So Angrek slowly moving towards, well not moving very much at all actually, and the remnants of Bilal uh, still hovering around south of uh, Rodrigues and also moving quite slowly. There's a bit of a uh, bottleneck in the steering currents at the moment. So here's the area of interest that we're looking at. It's 364 kilometers from Sudest Island uh, in Papua New Guinea, 456 from Willis Island, 858 from Mackay, uh, 905 from Cairns and 1035 from Gladstone. It feels like once again we're in a similar scenario as to when we we're looking at the early stages of Jasper not too long ago, although this one could be a much different type of cyclone, uh, could have a lot more power behind it as we're more deeper into the season now. Well, let's take a look at satellite imagery. First of all, we're looking at Angrek, which is the strongest storm out there today. 65 mile per hour winds estimated, and there is a little bit of an eye wall there. And I'm not sure if it translates down to the lower levels, but certainly in those upper levels of the cloud structure, it's been trying to do that for a good 24 hours or so, but it's been in a constant battle with very high wind shear. Now there's that tropical depression over the Northern Territory. It really looks like an excellent system in and of itself. It doesn't have the winds because it's obviously well over land, uh, but it does have a fairly low pressure around 995 millibars. This is what's left of Bilal, by the way. It's not moved very far since it was passing through the Mascarene Islands four days ago. Uh, and you can see it here earlier visible imagery looks like it's starting to take a turn towards the southwest now and it looks like it will continue in that vein and actually die off completely uh, before it manages to get anywhere else now this is imagery of um Angrek, I almost forgot the name for a second there, uh, and it's looking pretty decent, not too far from the edge of the Himawari 9 imagery. Uh, got some decent convective tops, but once again, it's wind shear that's going to be uh, proving to be an issue for this storm. However, there could be some further intensification later on down the line, and it may reach hurricane equivalent status. Now this is the area of interest in the Coral Sea and really it doesn't look very good so far. However, the wind profile is looking decent and the convection just needs to get closer towards the centre, if there is indeed a centre, before this thing really starts to fire up. I'm pretty confident that will happen in the next couple of days and I think by day 3 or 4 we will have a mature cyclone and in a little moment we'll show you just how the models expect that to happen. You can already see some banding on the uh, Mackay radar onto the top right hand image there uh, and you can see it start to approach the region already. 
uh, but it really won't arrive properly for a good while. And there's this other little area of interest off the eastern coast of Madagascar. We're not sure whether it's going to develop on its own or whether it becomes part of another much broader system that we are expecting to form next week or later in the uh, next week and could become another system that goes on to affect Mauritius. Sea surface temperatures look fairly good in the eastern Pacific in the main area in the eastern part of the basin there. For what it's worth of course it is well in the off season. The Atlantic a similar story, much cooler sea surface temperatures generally but in the Caribbean Sea there's still one or two spots licking up there at 28 degrees Celsius. Western Pacific does a little bit better in the winter time. In the Philippine Sea, those temperatures getting up to around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius near Palau and also to the southwest of Guam. But in general, those temperatures are much cooler than what we usually expect. North Indian Ocean, quite cool there as well. Um, the uh, Arabian Sea, the eastern part of it along the west coast of India is the hot spot right now at 30 degrees in some areas. Southwest Indian Ocean, very warm, although there is a cool pool after Bilal there, quite clearly noticeable uh, near Reunion, particularly down to 27 degrees Celsius. Very warm to the west coast of Madagascar. Coral Sea looking very warm as well, 30 degrees plus where that system is now. Gulf of Carpentaria piping hot along the coastline and also in the uh, Joseph Bonaparte Gulf. And in the South Pacific, very warm sea surface temperatures near Vanuatu, extending eastwards towards Tuvalu and north of Fiji, well above 30 degrees Celsius, a big pool even of 32 up there, if any systems take advantage of that. That is above average by about 2 degrees Celsius. Southwest Indian Ocean still has a significant area above average, but the cool spots there are in Bilal's shadow and also where Angrik is right now, causing a bit of upwelling. Western Pacific in general is a little bit above average and the El Nino effect is still alive and well for now. As a matter of fact, some of the Australian coastlines north and west are a little bit cooler than average at the moment. This is the oceanic heat content and there's a fair bit of it in the Coral Sea, especially in the next three or four days of this potential storm. After that, those uh, amounts will cool off. And in the Western Pacific, there's still a little bit of a mass there as well around Guam. Not too much to shout about, Eastern Pacific is virtually dead. And that's the latest. Let's check the computer models then. The short range on the GFS takes a look at the South Indian Ocean. These two systems, the first one off the coast of Madagascar there, and then a second one that starts up to its east there. And they look like separate systems. And the second one wins out in the end and becomes a very large tropical cyclone that reaches hurricane strength within that five day period. Angrek is just chilling on the right hand side, barely moving at all and gradually strengthening, becoming a hurricane equivalent storm on its own as well, maybe category two actually, whilst this enormous cyclone on the left hand side really gets going. The Australian region, that cyclone over the Northern Territory, looks like it doesn't really get much further than that, moving westwards. And then of course we've got this next system in the Coral Sea that becomes a very powerful cyclone and look what we've got right now, a really um, potentially scary scenario there for the coast of Queensland, a very powerful cyclone bearing down on the coast and on the GFS there, that is a borderline category 5 on the Australian scale. We'll pick it up in a moment. Precipitation wise then for the whole region we're still looking at those two areas of high amounts from the two different cyclones. The first one that forms over the Northern Territory into the Western Australian region uh, producing some local amounts up to about uh, maybe 300 millimeters maximum. Then along the eastern coast of Queensland, this potential storm that we're looking at doesn't appear to be much of a rainmaker, but still producing up to 300 millimeters, which of course, after other storms in the past and general rainfall events, it's been a very wet summer over there in uh, the northeastern part of Australia. And uh, of course, out to sea, extremely high rainfall amounts, and you can't. Um, discredit that, that it could potentially be translated over land as well. So let's take a look at the longer range. This is day 5 to 10 and first of all we're looking at the Western Pacific for a potential development here. Uh, a very disorganized, disjointed one as you would expect to see really in January. One that tries to move up against 
uh, probably very high wind shear and moves off towards the west. Looks like it might stretch towards a landfall in Mindanao there towards the end of that 10 day period. It is getting into that longer range though so we're going to need some more time before we uh, make any judgment calls on that one. Well, in the southwest Indian Ocean, that enormous cyclone funnels off towards the southeast and stays strong for a good while, turns post-tropical. Angrek goes by in its shadow there without incident. And there may be another cyclone forming behind that of a fairly, fairly large size as well, which could go on to give Rodrigues more tropical storm force winds. And so it's a very busy period here in the southwest Indian Ocean. However, the main island of Mauritius looks like it does get away with only limited impacts. You can find our Full City merch store, scan the barcode and that will take you through to it and you can take a look at our full season individual storm animations on request as well as our still waiting for Hone t-shirt and everything else that goes with it. Fullcity.com slash store. Well, in the silly range then, we've got more uh, shenanigans in the Western Pacific, that Philippine storm moving through westwards, uh, staying fairly weak, and then a second storm appearing there in the Western Pacific. What is this? Uh, two systems on either side of the Philippines there in the very long range. We're into February by that point. It's a long way out, uh, but who knows? Stranger things have happened. So that's the Western Pacific, one Philippine impact there through the southern part of uh, the islands, Mindanao and through Palawan, and then into the, well, not far from the coast of southern Vietnam. Also in this super long range, that second chunky cyclone continues southwards, doesn't reach hurricane status, but gets close. And behind that, is there yet another one? Oh, not quite, I don't think, but it looks like that second system there has a second wind, as it were. It looks like it doesn't want to die quietly by the looks of things and holds its eye for a little bit longer after it looks like it's about to die off there. Uh, but that is extremely long range and we can't read too much into that yet. Well, on this day, we had a fairly potent cyclone, Cyclone Victor. It wasn't at its peak on this day. It happened a bit earlier, uh, but it did peak as a Category 2 storm in the South Pacific. I'm sure some of you may remember it in 2016. Can you believe it's eight years since 2016 now? We also had Cyclone 8S, which was about to be named Quarantine in the Southwest Indian Ocean. Another one that I remember well, but it did, I think, stay out to sea. may have affected Rodrigues. Of course, uh, a little bit later on, the next name after Victor, I think, um, yeah, it was, Winston. I was just trying to think if there were any in between, but there weren't. Well, in the Atlantic, the first name on this hurricane season's list is Alberto. The Eastern Pacific's season will start with a letter. And in the Central Pacific, we're still waiting for Hone, as we have been since 2019. In the Western Pacific, our next name is Iwinya, and in the North Indian Ocean, it's Rimal. We are code yellow for the Coral Sea right now, and so far we've had two storms this year. In the Southern Hemisphere, then a little bit of confusion possibly, Angrek was the last name. That was named by the Indonesian Meteorological Department. It was in their small area of uh, operations. The next name in the Australian region is Kiralee, Southwest Indian Ocean. The next name is Candice, and in the South Pacific, it's Nat.